In 2006, I was asked to be in the inaugural exhibition of the Museum of Contemporary Art Detroit. And I had had friends that were like, why would you go to Detroit? And I said, I'm not sure. And they said, well, why don't you come and do a, a site visit just to get a sense. Plus the curator, Klaus Curtis, was somebody that I admired. And so I wanted to do it anyway, um, but I didn't really know what I was going to do. And I spent about 36 hours in Detroit and I was taken around different sites by uh, a guy named G, uh, Mitch Cope and his wife Gina, who had lived in Detroit, moved to New York, and then moved back to Detroit because of their connection to the city, because they'd grown up there and they loved it so much. I got taken to the old Packard plant and a tire factory and the train station and a few other places, and I just sort of saw this you know, organization of stuff being thrown away that once was really valuable and now just isn't. But then within the whole degradation of the city, there was a pretty vibrant art community and there was a great community of people that were trying to make the inside of the city, which was now like a donut, um, better again. You know, uh, People having huge gardens, growing things and selling them in farmer's markets in the suburbs. Um, there was a bread company that grew their wheat in the city of Detroit and sold their stuff out in the you know, in the suburbs. And I just kept thinking like how amazing throughout everything that the city has gone through that there was still this hope that comes out of nothing. So that was where I came from when I was there and experienced that and then built all of the, the structures from stuff that I had sourced in Detroit from three different sites and built all of the characters in LA and then put them all together at once in the space in Detroit. My work had always uh, revolved around being worried about the death of my parents. So with, with that work, it was kind of this point in time we were about to move back to Winnipeg and you know we were expecting a child and there were all these sort of positive things that were happening that I kind of thought to try and build something that wasn't always um, picking at the same scab. Uh, would be important for me and also the experience of the hope that I found in Detroit or you know the growth of something from nothing was important to me. Right around 1996 when we were doing the Art Lodge stuff um, Adrian Williams had come into the studio one day and he had a painting that said uh, I went to the Riviera and I played husbands and wives with all the boys and that was the first time I'd seen text in art that actually was interesting to me. And having made a lot of things out of scrappy materials, but never having something to really tie it all together, I thought, well, maybe I'll try and add some kind of text to the work. Um, it's been different with sculptures because up until recently, I just did a show in Miami where these cigarettes are holding picket signs with text on them. Um, there was never any text element in the sculpture, so all came from titling. and. What I would do at first was I would listen to music while I was working and I would write something down that I thought I heard, check the lyrics, make sure I wasn't stealing from somebody and then use that text. And eventually it, it like with the actual physical nature of the work went from finding things that look like things to manipulating things to look like things. With the text it was like finding text or hearing things that I thought I heard to realizing that I have this wealth of shit that I've heard all of my life, um, people fighting with each other or people saying loving things to each other. And um, with this specific piece, it was really nice to think about how to wrap that all into one thing. And the funny thing is, is that I had about six different titles for it and I had forgotten the paper at home. And it was about three hours before the opening and Klaus Curtis came and said, I need a title for this. And so I just r literally wrote this down and gave it to him. And I think that it turned out pretty good. Sometimes when you don't think about it, it works a lot better.